so I'm very much looking forward to hearing uh, what, what you have to say and where we might take this conversation. So I actually want to begin by reading an excerpt, just a short excerpt from FDR's 1933 inaugural address. I think it bears returning to uh, at this time in our nation's history. There were obvious differences between when FDR took office and today, uh, but there are some similarities to the crises, economic and otherwise, uh, that we're facing as a nation. So let me start with these words. This is preeminently the time to speak the truth the whole truth, frankly and boldly. Nor need we shrink from honestly facing conditions in our country today. This great nation will endure as it has endured, will revive, and will prosper. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing that we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert, retreat, and to advance. In every dark hour of our national life, a leadership of frankness and vigor has met with that understanding and support of the people themselves, which is essential to victory. I am convinced that you will again give that support to leadership in these critical days. Uh, the, the address goes on, um, but I, the, the reason uh, that, that I wanted to start with that is we actually read it this year at our congregation in southern Vermont on Rosh Hashanah as the, the prayer for our country, as a stand into the prayer for, for America that we usually read at that point in the service. Uh, and it felt deeply appropriate, I think because FDR in the address not only names uh, just how perilous these times are, but he also names the importance of in the face of this peril and in the face of every, all of what we're, uh, we're up against, we cannot retreat into fear and into a politics of fear. So it felt particularly apropos. Um, I think I'm grafting the spirit of, uh, of the theme of the High Holidays and, and the Jewish tradition onto his speech, but in a lot of ways what I hear FDR saying in that address is we have to learn how to choose life again. We have to learn how we may best choose life. And in some ways I think that's the, the choice this election season. So I want to I wanna give a little background about how, what side of the family came from where, because there's, there's already been a lot of questions. My mother, uh, her family is the Jewish side. Uh, she grew up in Frankfort, Indiana, and then they later moved to, to Miami Beach. Uh, and even if it's true on, on Wikipedia, or, or other, I've heard this as well, that there may be some truth to, to FDR having uh, Jewish heritage. Uh, for the purposes of this talk, I'll say, you know, that, that's not the Jewish side. Uh, but, <laughs> My grandmother was Anna, who, who some of you, many of you perhaps will remember as the, the only daughter of FDR and Eleanor. She met a young reporter named John Bodiger on uh, the campaign train, her father's campaign train in 1932. John Bodiger was a Republican at the time, actually, but he, that quickly changed uh, <laughs> during the courtship. Uh, my father, also John Bodiger, spent part of his early childhood in the White House. Anna, uh, we called her uh, Nana, moved the family there from Seattle in order to really be a companion to her father during the third term. Uh, and my father learned to ride a bike in the same driveway that FDR learned to walk down again uh, in the wake of the polio. He called FDR Papa. And there's a wonderful story of my dad uh, playing in the White House elevators that I want to share, really just because it's a, it's a wonderful story, and I think it reflects on, uh, or illustrates how my dad saw his grandfather. Uh, in those days, my dad's life ambition was to be a Secret Service agent. And he's five years old, running around the, the White House, and they had a little uniform made up for him, and he would get to watch movies in the White House theater and all of these, you know, these fun things. And uh, he would play in the elevators endlessly, going up and down. And there's one story that FDR had an important meeting to get to, and he was with the Secret Service men, and they, they wheeled up the elevator and tried to use it, but my dad was playing in it. And, uh, and they called up the elevator shaft, Johnny, stop goofing around, bring the elevator down, the president has an important meeting. And he, he disregarded it, he kept playing, until uh, FDR himself said, you know, Johnny, stop this nonsense, bring the elevator down. Uh, Grandpa has an important meeting. So he brought it down dutifully, and at that point, uh, the doors opened, and FDR wheeled himself in, blocked the entrance to the Secret Service agents, the door closed, and he and my father kept playing, going up and 